So we're in Pillar Point Harbor for the next segment of this episode on maritime heritage, and I'm with Jim Delgado, who's the National Program Coordinator for all things maritime heritage. Jim, welcome to your sanctuary. Thanks, Paul Michelle. Good to be here. There's something really incredible going on here in Pillar Point. Why don't you tell us what's going on? Well, we're working with the Office of Ocean Exploration and Research and Boeing to test an amazing vehicle, an autonomous underwater vehicle, or an AUV, known as Echo Ranger, at Boeing is provided and working with the RV Fulmar and with Coda Octopus Echoscope, we're doing a systematic survey in 3,000 feet of water of the USS Independence, the biggest and the deepest shipwreck in Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary. USS Independence is famous as uh, the first US Navy aircraft carrier to be dedicated entirely to nighttime operations, carrying the war around the clock in the Pacific. She was built as a CVL. She was the first of her class, and these CVLs are basically means aircraft carrier light. They were built fast and put onto cruiser hulls just to get these ships out there in response to the need for more ships and more planes in a Pacific War. At the end of the war, Independence was set aside and was sent out to Bikini to become a target with about 90 other ships for Operation Crossroads, which is the immediate post-war test of the bomb as a, as a weapon. Uh, against ships and survived both blasts but was badly damaged. She was taken back to the United States and in San Francisco became the base for the Navy's first radiological safety school where they trained sailors in how to respond if their ship had been in an atomic attack and ultimately at the end of her days was towed out into what today of course is the sanctuary and scuttled by the Navy on January 26, 1951. Nobody's seen her since though uh, Okeanos Explorer, our NOAA ocean ship of exploration, did image uh, a little bit of a big sonar blob on the bottom, and that's it until now. So tell us about where the ship lies. What is the depth there? What's, a, what's it like down there? What do you hope to see? Well, Independence is just about 30 miles off and uh, in range of the Farallons uh, at the edge of the shelf in about 3,000 feet of water. As to what exactly is down there, we don't know. Because, of course, when you're on the surface and you're mapping with multi-beam, what you're getting is the kind of relief that it, you know, may look like a, a seabed, but the pixels, if you're looking at it in terms of a camera, these pixels are as big as this parking lot. So in terms of exactly how it all sits, we don't know uh, what the seabed looks like. We don't know if Independence is on its side or upside down or right side up. So this survey is all about that, as well as testing the technology. We want to be able to see how well the sanctuary class small boats work in deploying this new type of technology. We want to be able to see how the Coda Octopus Echoscope, which we've used on other maritime heritage missions, works in an AUV, uh, which you know just drives itself down there on the bottom, systematically collecting the data surfaces, and then on shore it's downloaded, and we take a look, and then out it goes again for another 30-hour mission. So tell us about getting the images themselves. I mean, you don't just crack open this AUV and out pops pictures. No. Uh, the way it works is that the Coda Octopus folks have this highly refined three-dimensional sonar, and it's, it's good resolution. I mean, it's, you could literally fly over, and if this bench was made of metal and this table is attached to it, you could see all of that. You could see the braces. It's that detailed, and we've seen that with the other work that Code Octopus has given us uh, in San Francisco Bay and at the Golden Gate with the historic wrecks of the SS City of Chester and the SS City of Rio de Janeiro. But to get that, it's not just the gathering of the data, then they process it, run it through, and then what you end up with is a three-dimensional map, if you will, of independence on the bottom. So the deck, this hull, all of those things, if there's a hole in the deck, say, you know, where the elevators were, where the planes came up, it will show you those. And it's not just a picture, it's actually a measurable bit of data. In other words, you can say that hole is this big. It's 73 feet by so many feet, it sticks up this high. That's the beauty of this sonar. It's not just imaging, yeah. it's, it's mapping. So Jim, tell us about some of the next steps that you're envisioning for all of this information to be shared with the public. Well. Independence and the mapping of it is part of a two-year mission to look at the shipwrecks in Monterey Bay, Gulf of the Farallons, National Marine Sanctuaries, as well as Cordell Bank, which we now know has one, 
and to also look at some of the shipwrecks in the nearby national parks and state parks for that matter. So ultimately we're going to do a report on all of those but in the case of independence what we're likely to do is a special report on her and consider if there's going to be any other work. Other work could include diving down to it but it may be nothing more than just saying here we know exactly what it is based on the, this data and leave it at that. What about ever going back to the wreck in a man submersible? Well, that would be exciting, and having ridden in, you know, submersibles down, you know, a few thousand feet, or in the case of riding to Titanic, 12,000 feet, it's always a thrill to be there as the scientist and to physically interact, even if it's through a sphere in a window with, with the wreck. I'm not sure what that will happen. Um, with independence, what might happen if we were to dive it would be with a remotely operated vehicle with folks on shore watching. With Okeanos Explorer, we have that capacity in NOAA, and in that, that means that not only a few people in the sub can look at it, but if you use you know, telepresence-enabled exploration that you know, is a hallmark of Okeanos Explorer and Bob Ballard's Nautilus, uh, then all sorts of folks can tune in and watch at the same time.